Well, it's time for part four of uh, our Starry Sky watercolor stars tutorial. This uh, session we're going to be doing our stars. And uh, for me, this is the most fun part of the whole uh, painting. So uh, you're not going to need a whole lot of supplies. We'll talk about that in a minute. So uh, let's uh, get ready and uh, let's have some fun. Well, to start out, we're going to use two brushes, but only one to actually paint with. I'm going to be using the smaller round brush. Uh, I'm going to use the uh, smaller round brush to paint. The bigger round brush I'll be using to help uh, create the stars, and we'll show you in a minute uh, how that works. I've got two kinds of paint here, too. I've uh, got uh, both the white watercolor and I've got acrylic, and I use both of those. Uh, and you'll see why as we go through the process. A uh, little clear water, got my baby wipes, and uh, we're ready to go. But before we actually do our painting, I'm going to take that and put it out of the way. We're going to do some practice uh, because uh, uh, doing these stars can be a little bit of a challenge if, if you've not tried it before. So uh, we're going to use some uh, just some black drawing paper and we're going to make a uh, actually kind of a, a sky field of our own here just on the on the paper uh, just to get the feel for how to create these stars uh, when I do the stars I don't draw them in or I don't you know, paint them in one by one uh, it gives it a very artificial look you want more of a random look for stars and so uh, we're going to use a, a tapping technique uh, where I'm going to fill the smaller brush with paint and then I'm going to uh, tap it on the larger brush. Now just a, a caution as we start here, uh, this does get messy because pa uh, paint tends to spatter uh, as uh, as we do this. So uh, make sure that uh, you're somewhere where uh, it's not going to be a problem if you get a few extra paint spots out or you might want to lay down some uh, protective, maybe some plastic underneath where you're drawing. Uh, and just make sure you have a lot of room because this uh, this will get a little bit messy. Okay, I've just got white watercolor and I'm, as you can see, I'm just tapping on the edge. Now the, the key here uh, is you want a variety of sizes of stars and so you want some kind of bigger and brighter, you want some not so bright uh, and uh, the way to do that you control it by one, the amount of paint you have in the brush, and two, um, the amount of water you have in the paint. So if the brush is really full uh, with water, it's going to tend to make bigger uh, bigger stars. Uh, if you are using uh, just uh, less, you know, less water, uh, it's going to tend to make smaller stars. So just simply tapping. These are a little bigger. I've added a little extra water. You can see some of that spatter there. And that's pretty much it. Now we uh, we just did that first group of stars in watercolor and this time we're going to use uh, acrylic and uh, the reason I use acrylic and watercolor, watercolor tends to dry uh, not quite as bright, it darkens as it dries and acrylic will tend to dry brighter uh, particularly if it's a little thicker and uh, so if you look at the night sky you'll see that uh, stars are kind of varying in brightness and uh, so if you want a realistic feel uh, using both watercolor and acrylic will uh, will give you that and uh, again I'm just coming back in and tapping you can see some of my spatter there I've got a lot of water uh, if you want to create kind of a, a uh, star cluster then uh, you just tap real fast in the same area for a little while. Notice I changed the angle that I'm holding the brushes at too so that uh, again it doesn't all appear uh, to be coming from the same direction. Incidentally this is why I don't use a toothbrush. Some, some uh, times people will, or artists will use a toothbrush to create this kind of spatter. Uh, I don't like it because it tends to uh, make it more like a spray most of the time. It doesn't give me the, the look that I'm really wanting. So uh, so you just keep coming back in and uh, again for, for bigger stars you're going to add a little bit more water uh, but uh, for 
smaller stars and brighter stars, then uh, you want uh, to have more paint than water. Now, you always want to have a few you know, kind of standout stars. And uh, the way I do that is I use uh, what's called a mall stick. M-A-H-L is how it's spelled. My uh, first uh, oil painting teacher called it a granny stick, and uh, this is one I made years ago and still use. Uh, and uh, what you do with a mall stick is it, it's something to rest your wrist on uh, to give you a little bit more control uh, so you, you're not shaky. Because what I'm going to do here is I'm, I'm dipping into the paint. I'm going to rest my wrist on the uh, stick, and then I'm going to just tap in a bright star and I'm going to do a few more of these. Now the key here is don't do too many and uh, you know, spread them out. Do you know two or three here and one or two in another place and um, if you look up in the night sky the stars are not all equally bright so uh, and, and you usually just have a few that are standing out really bright so so we don't want to overdo it because that's going to give it an artificial look but uh, just come through, add a few big stars, use, use a stick. In fact, I'll, uh, I'll show you uh, in the next section how uh, to do this if you don't have a mall stick. Uh, so let's move on. Well, we're ready now to uh, actually put the stars in our painting that we've been working on for the last few weeks. Now, to protect the parts where we don't want the stars to show up, I'm just going to lay that... Uh, sheet of watercolor paper that I used to uh, demonstrate a graded wash on. And I'm going to lay that right over top there <clears throat> so that uh, it protects the rest of the paper. You can use anything, paper towel, uh, one of your dry baby wipes, whatever. And I'm going to come in and start tapping just like I did before. Uh, and I'm right now using just regular watercolors. And again, these, uh, these will tend to mix a little bit with the background, and they're going to dry dimmer. And that's perfectly all right. In fact, I like that uh, because uh, what it does is, again, it gives a variety to the look of stars. Um, the one thing that you, you want to always make sure when you're doing a starscape is uh, have that variety. Don't uh, don't just tap in you know three or four hundred dots somewhere uh, that all look the same. And uh, and resist the temptation to try to draw. I, I don't know what you really call them, but it's the uh, it's uh, sort of the uh, the flare of the star with you know a point going up and down and to the sides uh, because. Um, you, you do see that occasionally, but it's usually with a photograph, and it's a lens flare. Uh, but if you're just looking up into the starry sky, you're not going to see that. So Now again, if you want to be creative and do something different and unusual, then, uh, then you can go ahead. But uh, still going ahead here. Now I'm about to switch to acrylics. These uh, have been watercolors that I'm using, and uh, so I'm, I'm going to load my brush up with some acrylic paint at this point. And... Again, it's going to dry a little brighter so that I will have uh, that variety that I'm looking for. And after a few taps of that, I'm going to get... Uh, oh, I'm, uh, I, I actually started with a mall stick, but I'm going to show you in a, in a minute uh, what to do if you don't have a mall stick. So, so here I'm, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put in a little galaxy. Uh, and... Uh, what I'm doing is, again, I'm using acrylics here, and I'm just going to tap in uh, a little bit of paint, and then I'm going back and getting clear water, and then uh, as I get that clear water, I'm going to come in and just soften. Now, I, my brush isn't just super wet, but uh, it's clean, it's got clear water, and I don't want that, uh, that galaxy to stand out just super bright. So as I, uh, as I paint around it a little bit, and draw it out. And I'm going to add a little bit more water. And again, what that's going to do, it's going to make it mix a little bit with the dark blue background, so it's going to soften that color, and uh, it's not going to stand out as much. Because uh, if you look up in the sky, uh, unless you have a telescope, you're not going to see distant galaxies or or nebula or anything like that. So, uh, so you want to soften that so it's not particularly bright. 
Okay, now I'm switching over and I'm going to uh, use now the end of a brush, uh, a large brush, and I'm going to use that as sort of a mini mall stick here. And uh, you can just see in the lower left hand corner the end of the brush that I'm, uh, it's my large round brush. And uh, you notice I also just tapped in a really big spot of white. And I don't want that there, so I'm just going in with white or with the clear water and, and softening that. And now let's try adding in a couple of big stars. Not a whole lot. Again, you don't want to overdo this. Just a few dots here and there that are going to stand out above all the other ones. And give it that a little bit more of a realistic look. Again, one or two there. And that pretty much does it. And we're going to take our cover sheet off there. Now the last thing to do is to take the tape off. And uh, to me it's almost kind of like unwrapping a Christmas present because I've been looking forward to getting this done. Well, I guess I do add one more thing here. So I'm going to go back in and touch up that galaxy just a bit. And now you can see that brush that I was using as a, a, a mini mall stick. And now I believe we're done. So it's time to take the tape off. I'm going to put the brushes aside, make sure they're clean. Of course, the big one is clean because I didn't use it for anything except tapping on, but uh, the small one, make sure it's washed out, especially if you've been using acrylic, because if acrylic dries on the brush, you're not going to get it out. And now we're just going to turn it over. Now, when you take the tape off of here, again, this is painter's tape, so it shouldn't damage the paper, but uh, be careful to always pull away from the painting itself. Uh, and the reason that I do that is uh, I don't want to take a chance of the paper tearing and tearing into uh, what I've painted. So, uh, so I'm always going to pull kind of up and away uh, from uh, the painting as I take this tape off. Again, I, it's, I, I almost never have problems with painter's tape tearing the paper, but it can happen. So I pull up and away just like that. And one more to go. I got a little bit on the back there. We got to get off. And almost done. There's the last little piece. I could leave that, but I don't want to. There we go. And then there's one last thing to do. And as you're starting out as an artist, never forget to sign your work because uh, I always tell people when I sign my chalk drawings you never know a hundred years from now it might be worth something so I want my name on it uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and sign that and that's gonna do it I hope you've enjoyed this project we'll have a new one next month and uh, don't forget to have fun